Previously on Naya. Seven sons will unite against the outcast. Three orphans save the world. Jaron, you are one of the seven sons. Do all of the known seven sons know that they're the seven sons? As far as we know, yes. Do they talk to each other? No. Well, they're going to have to unite, right? Yes. So are we working on that? That is where I would ask help from you all. Maybe we can bring them to this magical tree house. <laughs> I guess we could go to the foothills next and then sing, depending on how that goes, then we can try touring. We're not about that shoe life here at the <laughs> foothills. It's called the foothills for a reason. <laughs> I, I'm kind of uncomfortable because it's halflings, you know. It, mm-hmm. God, we don't necessarily. So racist. No, I mean it's it's just <laughs> one of those things. Sake, I'm man. trying to branch out. You know what I mean? Like, I go, thanks, my brother. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's kind of weird, but all right. <laughs> Welcome to Naya. Hey everyone, welcome to Nair. My name is Jay, your DM. This is Aaron. I play Tatsuo, the human samurai. I'm Amy, the high... Oh, well, I'm playing Bijou, the high elf glamour bard. <laughs> oh my god. He Just told me to be quiet. Going. He told Introduce me to be quiet. Introduce yourselves or <laughs> I'll do it for Ian, you. Ian, and he plays Harry, the, the dru- druid. Right. No one can see who you're pointing She's to. She's pointing at me, in okay. case you were wondering. Gosh. My name's Andrew. I'm playing um, Rivatevich Kolosevsky, the Paladin Hill Dwarf. I don't understand why the hardest thing every single time is the introduction. <laughs> I just don't like going Should in the same the order same every, every time. time. No, that's terrible. <sighs> okay. Anyway, um, you guys, uh, we left off in, uh, you just got to the foothills. You were outside having a nice dusk drink and musical experience with a bunch of the halflings who all welcomed you in. And um, someone you were asking about uh, going to see Brock. Brock. Yeah, Brock the Rock. Brock the Rock. So I I looked at my notes and uh, we don't know who the seventh son is in the halflings. Right. So correct. We're gonna try to suss that out. Get it. So we got rooms. Mm-hmm. And I tranced overnight. Okay. And the next morning we wake up. Is Beery there to like take us around? Uh, Beery's not there anymore, but uh, uh, Papo is the guy who was playing the ukulele. Papo, where did Beery go? Oh, Beery is, uh, he actually has is one of the ferry drivers. So he's probably on a shift uh, driving the ferry, you know. Oh, well... We'd like to go meet Brock. Oh, Brock, the, uh, yeah, Brock's the dude, man. He's pretty chill. Yeah. Uh, where is he? Where does he like to hang? Well, uh, I could take you to him. He's probably at the, uh, at the town center. Uh, I, I, I can take you over to our, to his house and, uh, we'll see if he's home. That sounds wonderful. So what are y'all doing here? Where are you, uh, what's your, where are you coming from? None of your business. Whoa, Whoa, dude. I'm just asking a nice, helpful She's question. She's joking. Her sense of humor is to say very rude things in a serious way. And it's funny, <laughs> right? It's so funny. Yes. Ha, 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 ha. Um, we are just... So we sort of met each other. And look how different we are, right? Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty strange. I haven't met a lot of uh, 
groups that are so mixed is pretty chill. Yeah, so we just sort of committed to like, let's go see all kinds of different people and experience the world and get out there. So. Oh, nice. So you're just uh, meeting new people and experiencing the world. I like that. I like it. Yeah. I can dig it. Hey, if you guys are interested, I've actually, my uh, my daughter's actually getting married tonight. Yeah, bro. So yeah. You can, uh, you y'all are more than welcome to come be guests, and we're gonna have a big feast. It's gonna be a good time. That sounds wonderful. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, oh. that sounds very uh, chill. Yeah, it is, man. <laughs> you're trying my best here, guys. So okay, trying, you're doing good. <laughs> I'm trying to be a. <laughs> All right. Well. Um. So you guys get to the. Uh, he he takes you over to Brock's house. And you actually see Brock kind of um, there's a there's a halfling with a long blonde hair and no shirt on, and he's uh, he's actually got a little um, like goat that he has kind of like on a leash, and he's out in front of his hill and like mm-hmm. using the goat to kind of like mow the lawn basically. <laughs> uh, and he he sees Popo coming. He like lifts his hands up. He's like, Popo, what's going on, man? You guys all ready for the wedding tonight? And Papa's like, yeah, my dude. Hey, these friends over here wanted to meet you. They just came in yesterday. I got to, I hung out with them last night. We played some sick tunes. It was fun. (laughs) Hello, I'm Bijou. Nice to meet you. What's up, Bijou? Hey, my name is Brock. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. So like, how did you get to be the dude of this place? Well, I don't know. I mean... I, I don't like to brag or anything, uh, but I, I am pretty good at, uh, I, I, I guess, uh, you know, won like a, a competition and uh, people respected me. I don't, I've been, uh, I'm pretty athletic, I'll, I'll put it that way, and uh, people respect that a lot, I guess, around here. What kind of competition? Well, we, uh, we actually ride some uh, some dolphins from time to time out on the coast and uh i guess i'm the best dolphin rider in the town but again i don't like to brag about things it's all chill papa's like yeah listen brock is the coolest dude ever he actually can ride two dolphins at the same time and like stand on their backs it is amazing that's really cool yeah like they call me the dolphin whisperer or whatever it's chill that's neat. So, um, what are, are your skills going to be on display in the next few days? Well, we, I, we could. I mean, I guess we had we we have a big uh, dolphin competition coming up, and I'm kind of like, you know, I host these kind of things now. But uh, I, I'll definitely, if I get the chance, I'll hop on. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, so, like, how long has this uh, uh, town been a town? With the foothills, well, yeah. we've been around for, well, you know, as long as we remember. <laughs> if you know what I'm, if you know what I mean. Uh, you know, Tozis has been good, my man. Uh, he's he uh, ever since the first halfling was was placed here in the foothills, we've just grown and reproduced and been a pretty pretty chill civilization. We don't like to get into trouble. Trouble doesn't like to find us. Oh, it's you. all about the balance, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Such liars. Um, so, uh, question, do you, this is kind of a, a weird thing to ask, and I understand if you are too busy having fun to do things like this, but do you keep any sort of records or histories that I could read about halflings of days past? We don't have a lot of uh, written down stuff. It's a more of a, you know what they say, an oral tradition. But uh, I could definitely, I, I, I know a lot of our history. I could definitely help out if you're looking for something specific. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I, well, you're coming to the wedding tonight, right? Oh, most definitely. Hmm. So about that first halfling. Yeah. What first halfling? What do you, you mean? You said since the first halfling was put here. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, every race has had their, their first, right? Right. So if you had to say, like, who do you think is the most relatable to that first guy? What do you mean? Most relatable? What do you, like, who like, 
similar personalities or like descended from do you keep track of your genealogy well that's a very interesting question uh i mean not too much what what gets you guys so interested in our uh in in halfling genealogy i love history it's like one of my three favorite subjects yeah we're just curious and so I like to hear about the beginning and learn about things in order of what they happened. And so it'd be cool if there was like a family here who was like related to the or most directly related to the first one. Roll a perception check. Okay. Tato, you can roll one too. Oh, okay. 21. 11. All right, well, uh, Bijou, you kind of notice um, the more you guys are talking about it that um, Papo and and uh, Brock are kind of like giving each other like side eyes and kind of like mm. squinting a little bit. Um, but they seem still very friendly and like not really. So is that is that taken? Well, never mind. Um, can I cast a zone of truth? Do you know that there? Do you did you do a perception check? I can I is that is that do possible? a perception check first? Okay, you're gonna get us in trouble. Four or uh, sorry, ten. My bad. Just... Okay, you didn't you didn't catch the side glimpses. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, how about this, um, Brock? Can we hang at the wedding for a little bit, just long enough for me to tell you and only you a really cool story? Huh, I love a good story, my dudes. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. I'll see you there. Awesome. Let's do that. How far away is the coast? Um, like a mile, couple miles. It's all like it's a pretty small island, so. I'd like to go for a swim. Okay. Me too, with my new cloak. Oh. Okay. I'm thinking we can get ourselves in this competition. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rides and dolphins. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, you Do you want to try? I mean, we could paint you like a dolphin and do some crazy well, stuff. Well, you could or turn I could into a dolphin. You, or you can turn gosh, into a dolphin. Dang it, I could become a dolphin. And then <laughs> if, if I can breathe underwater, then it wouldn't be dangerous for me to... We could do some cool tricks. Yeah, we could. You could use my blowhole as you know, a toe secure point. And <laughs> that's really... Lose grip. <laughs> that's really disturbing. How would you breathe? <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. Let's enter. Let's okay. enter the competition. Let's practice. I'm down. So yeah, we're gonna go swimming and start practicing. Okay. <laughs> uh, I need to find a dolphin first, so um, I'm just gonna go for a swim. Are yeah. The dolf- are the dolphins everywhere? Pretty much. Or? Um, you you catch a few of them. You, you I mean, not catch, me? but you like see you with your eyes. You catch a few of them. Uh, you also see like a reef shark swimming around, but it doesn't seem to be bothering anything. Um, okay, okay. Dolphin. This is either going to be so awesome or it's going to go horribly wrong. No, it's going to go awesome. Trust me. <laughs> I'll make sure I have a wondrous appearance. Nothing can go wrong unless one of them jumps on me and you have to find your own dolphin and then. <laughs> oh no, we, we got to enter this as a team. Well, I mean, I might get excited as a dolphin and. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, we'll just do it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Anything else anyone wants to do before the wedding? I guess not. All right. So as it starts to get darker, um, you the Popo kind of like finds you guys again. It's like, hey, y'all, let's go. We got to the we the wedding's coming up. My dudes, it's going to be a good time. Come on over. Um, I don't know. Uh, basically there's a kind of a clearing between some of the hills and there's like a, all these like, um, poles with like little flag banners and there's like music playing and lanterns all over the place. And, um, you just see what seems like just the whole town basically there. And there's like everyone eating and drinking and there's a huge, like, um, 
roasted boar that everyone's sharing and all this stuff. And it's just like a party. It's a good old time. Um, you guys stay for the, uh, the, the, the nuptials, the ceremony. Um, it's all beautiful. Papa's daughter is like so excited. And her, her new husband is like, just like very nervous, but very, very handsome. And it's a big, it's a great scene question. What's the weather like outside? Is it partly cloudy or no? Moon? It's beautiful. Maybe. It's perfect. Uh, at this point, we're pro- probably at like half moon. Yeah. Okay. Why? <laughs> it's too nice out, so no reason. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the uh, Brock comes over to you guys and says, "Hey, y'all! I heard you. Uh, so you wanted to you wanted to talk about something? Here, here, have some drinks." Let's uh let's have a drink and we'll chat. And he hands um, everyone a beer. So I'm gonna turn to my friends first and be like, should we just you know talk about? I don't why trust we're here? him. Let's talk about it, but we'll not talk about the you other. You brought ones. it up and you didn't see the side eye. So why would you not trust him about it? Because I don't trust any halflings. She's been deeply suspicious. Can I correct you? You don't trust anyone. Right. So okay. I think we should talk about I'm, it. I'm, I'm going to be cagey about it. Not I'm, I'm mention gonna... der- names. Right. Absolutely. I'm okay. Cagey. So I'm going to uh, talk to Brock and say, all right. So we really came here because we wanted to warn you about something dangerous that's going on. He, um, he kind of like nods solemnly. He says, "That sounds uh, that sounds pretty, pretty not chill. Uh, it's good to know." Um, and he's interrupted by like Papa comes over with a drink in his hand. He says, "Hey, hey, everyone! Like, I just want to do a real quick toast. Like, it's been so cool to meet you guys and hang out. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's all have a drink, and and I hope we'll be really great friends." Brock's like, hey, dude, yeah, let's have a toast, but then we got to talk, okay? So, like, give us a second. So he, like, puts his drink in, and everyone, like, he he, he tries to get everyone to cheers. Yeah, I raise my glass. All right. How so yeah. does, but, like, really fast and low. All right, and he, like, pours back. Like, he, like, drinks the whole thing, and, like, Brock <laughs> does, too. Like, these halflings are, are party people. I drink people. the whole thing as well. Okay. Tatsu I'm, takes I'm a them. tiny sip. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll down the whole thing in sip. one. Go. I, I do it faster than they do. <laughs> oh, I'm are just you trying sure to about that. I'm in try, I'm uh, trying to roll, roll, him do that. roll yeah, a constitution check. Does everyone have to? No, just him because he's trying just to Mr. Cocky over here. Well, I'm you trying, spill it all I'm over trying to like a sorry. pool. Sixteen. Yeah. Mm. yeah, you beat him. Yes. Whoa, my dude Reeve, he's like super good at this. <laughs> I'm not trying to I'm not trying to compete, I'm just trying to impress. Because I want to make things right. Well, this dude's here to party, man. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Did you wrong I'm, them? I'm breaking boundaries here, okay? This is this is kind of what I'm trying to do. So does Popo kind of respect? Yeah, Popo kind of like stumbles off and goes to talk to another group of people. All right. Well, um, first of all, I, I don't want to be insensitive to how you guys run things and what you think about the world. So I, I do want to ask, um, what are the re- what, what's the relationship between the halflings and, for instance, the um, the tower at Moon Lake where all the high elves do the magic and research? What do you guys think about all that? He kind of nods. Says, well, we uh. It is kind of a tourist destination. We do have people go over there and visit sometimes, but um, I wouldn't say we don't. We kind of keep to ourselves, and mm-hmm. that's that's helped us and protected us and kept us safe for all these generations. And so we don't we don't really bother with the politics of the world so much. Right. Um, and I need everyone to roll a Constitution check. It was poison, of course. That's why she only took a teeny tiny sip. Can I get advantage? Ooh, that's a good one. Wait, you said constitution? um, 20. 18. 18. 17. I have a resistance, so I get advantage, right? No one cares. Well, you don't know if it's poison or not. Is it poison? Uh, It could be steroids. We could get lucky. Just roll it. (laughs) (laughs) Just roll it. I feel great. 
Um, constitution, 15. Okay. Um, everyone except for Bijou starts to feel like really like hazy and everything's starting to blur out. And then like one by one, you guys all pass out. Um, and Brock's like looking at BJ's like, Hey, uh, what you're, uh, what's you feeling? Okay. Yes. I feel fine. What was in the drink? Uh, roll a perception check. Oh man. I'm going to, I have my hand on my rapier. Okay. Oh shoot. That's off the table. Oh man. Perception is only nine. Okay. Wait. You get two halflings um, sneak up behind you and put like a hood over your head. Great. And like, love them. Tie you up, basically. So an 18 wasn't enough? Mm hmm. Jeez. I didn't even drink the whole. And yeah, get- she only mm-hmm. took a sip. I should get advantage on that. Nope. Um, so I have a hood over my head. I am going to um, cast. Uh, sorry, I, I want to do something <coughs> if I can. Um, they've also got your hands tied so if it's something where you need to like do something like no it's only verbal okay um dissonant whispers on brock okay do you Uh, have to be able to see him no okay it just he just has to be within range uh so he has to make a wisdom saving throw he has to beat uh 16 didn't you say your dream was halflings? Yeah. Oh, I forgot until just God. now. I I, you I, forgot? I, I didn't Guys, think no about. spoilers. I'm Guys, asleep right now. Don't ask me anything. Oh, man. Um, He did not succeed. Okay, good. So he takes 3d6 psychic damage, and he has to run away from me with all of his movement right away. So that's going to be a 12. Okay. I just um, forgot. He runs. I thought it was gnomes, and now I'm realizing it was halflings, and we should not have been so. Um, right when you do that, uh, you feel a blunt object hit you over the head, and you get knocked out. And um, you wake up, and everyone wakes up in um, like a dark, uh, looks like some sort of dungeon. Like you can hear like water dripping and. Um, there's like a door into this room and you're all tied up, uh, to chairs. Um, you see Papa, you see Brock and a couple other halflings in there, uh, with you. They're kind of standing above you. And then you see like a few like guards in the room that have spears and, uh, Brock is kind of like nursing an ice pack on his head and like um trying to get the dissonant whispers out and uh papa's like so you come on the night of my daughter's wedding oh (laughs) Oh, man and you ask questions you should not be asking why are you really here and what's going on my dudes all right i thought i could trust y'all well i thought we could trust you and i was just about to open up to you and tell you the truth and then you do this to us. So how do you expect us to trust you now? Yeah, I hate you. <laughs> okay, Tatsa. <laughs> what is this, one of those jokes? <laughs> no. I've never been joking. We tricked you. Okay. We tricked you. Tatsa is not helping. <laughs> not helping at all. All right. Here's the truth. Here's the absolute truth. We are really trying to visit all sorts of different places to try to save the world. But we have insensitive information and we don't know who we can trust with it. And so we were being a little secretive because we were still trying to figure out if we could trust you. And I was just about to open up and give you truth. And you knocked out my friends and knocked out me. And that is not a way to build friendships. Brock speaks up and he says, we've had a lot of recently, a lot of strange people coming in. A lot of weird dwarves, even some halflings that we haven't recognized, asking similar questions and causing a lot of trouble. And uh, 
even trying to kidnap some of our some of our friends and our family members. So forgive us if we're a little bit cagey and a little bit worried about protecting our people from people asking questions. Worried is one thing, but we've caused you no harm. We have no intention to kidnap anyone who, who are really just here to try to help. Who and you the- jumped to a conclusion that wasn't fair and you knocked out my friends and you hit me in the head and it really hurt. Who are the bad halflings that you don't recognize? Did you catch a name? No, of course not. I'm sure it was a lie if they would have told us the name anyway. I am. Um, can I can I ask you a question? Um, can can I look at can I recall like what the halflings looked like in my dream? Uh, roll a history chart. Okay. Um, eight. Uh, these guys don't look familiar. Okay. <clears throat> Are we tied up or anything? Or it's yes, just, okay. tied to chairs. We're just okay. tied to chairs. We're tied to chairs. Okay, yeah, that's right. Um, I don't know. I don't know. What so, to do. where do we go from here? So, you said that you want to that you're coming from the tower at Moon Lake. Yes. He uh, roll a persuasion check. Oh no problem. Please don't throw stuff. Sorry, I didn't mean to drop my phone there. Oh, switch that dice. It's it's a one, but now it would be an eleven. Yeah. Um. But I I point. Well, I I move my neck up to try to show them the moon like amulet. That yeah. We have. Um. They say it. everyone else who's come has said some other crazy stuff that we believed at first, and now we don't. Uh. There's only one way that you guys are truly. Uh, here to do good and here to help out. And that's if you've been blessed by Tozis, our great god. Does it look like a moose? No. Does it look like a deer? No. Does An it elk? live in the woods? No. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we. I don't think we met Tozis. Does it look like a giant? Aaron, no. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, listen. Why don't you... There's one way that we'll believe you. And that is if you challenge yes. our champion. Yes. And if you can beat our champion, then we'll believe that you were sent from Tosis. Challenge in what way? Well, <laughs> he, uh, they all kind of like laugh and leave the room. Um, and then the dwarves with spears kind of like point them at you. You mean and halflings? Halflings or? with spears, yeah. yeah. And then one of the halflings comes back and kind of unties you all and says like hey don't move man i've got our guards that got their spears trained on y'all do we have our stuff still no you all are no armor no weapons sorry i should have mentioned that when you woke up uh only like basically like undergarments like everything is gone um good thing i have a secret stash spot <laughs> is it your prison Ew. pocket <laughs> <laughs> I keep everything in there. No, you oh, don't. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> he keistered it. Um, and uh, so they untie you. Uh, he leaves. The guards with the spears like kind of back out the door, and then they shut the door, and you hear like some scuffling outside and some growling. And uh, I'm gonna put my hand on Tatsuo. Yeah, and I'm gonna say. Um, uh, I know you don't have weapons, but if we have to fight, I believe in you because you're strong, you're powerful, and you're vicious. And I'm gonna inspire her. You also don't have Ralph on your shoulder. No, where's he? So if you need an extra D8 for an attack, oh, cool D8 or, or a save. Uh huh. Um, the door opens back up, and you see two halflings dragging in a lion. And oh Jesus. Like they drag it in and kind of like, like have to maneuver around because it's like growling and swiping at them and stuff. Harry should just and talk to it. Then they maneuver their way out and the door locks behind them. And this lion turns to you all and roars and everyone roll initiative. Oh gosh. 
Hey, 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 everybody. It is Jay here, coming at you at the middle of the episode. What we like to call the mid-roll in the podcasting industry. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, two things that I want to mention today. Uh, check out the VCR kits. We just did our episode on the Deathly Hallows Part 1. Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, Aaron and I and Richard, we usually have a uh a podcast where we talk about movies from our childhood and see if they still hold up. But we've been doing a special series with our friend Andrew, who's never seen or read or heard any Harry Potter. Um, And we kind of introduce the movies to him one by one. So we're up to the Deathly Hallows part one right now. If you're a Harry Potter fan, you kind of grew up a Harry Potter fan like we did. It's really fun to kind of revisit these through the eyes of someone who has never had any experience with it before. Um, it's been a lot of fun to watch these movies and we're coming up near the end of this series now. So check it out. You can find everything about our show, uh, and the VCR kids and everything else we're doing here at the shoulder cat studio at world of Um, and also we're on Twitter and Facebook at world of Nire. You guys know that already. If you, if you're on this episode, you've heard me talk about it a lot. We're also on patreon.com slash world of Nire. Special shout out to all of our current patrons. They're just helping us kind of take a chunk out of some of the monthly costs of putting this podcast out every single week. Um, so we really appreciate that. Uh, if you're considering becoming a patron, check it out. Patreon.com slash world of Nire. A lot of really cool things that we offer there. And we are going to be getting started with our behind the scenes interviews coming up soon. So now's a really good time to join up. Uh, so please check it out. And other than that, enjoy the rest of the episode. Sixteen. Four. Oh, sorry. Seventeen plus one for initiative, so seventeen. Fifteen. I also got fifteen. Is this a female or a male? Male. So Tatsu is going to go first. Oh. You guys don't have any weapons or armor, um, so keep that in mind with your armor checks. That you're just going to have your regular like what I think it's like ten plus Constitution modifier or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. So my armor. Oh class God! Is I don't even know right what now. to do since. So Tatsu's You can grapple it. Yeah. She but I wanna like engage that animal handling skill if I can, but like I don't know like how if that's like a positive thing or what are you trying to do? She just like wants to not be eaten and she doesn't <laughs> like punching animals in the face. That's not cool. Yeah. So maybe she just goes like, Whoa, kitty kitty, calm down. <laughs> Because, like, she's feral. The lion's feral. She's got that animal handling. So maybe she's trying to, like... You can roll an animal handling check, but it's going to be really, really high. Because this lion is, like... Hungry. Hungry and... Okay, well, that's 14, so... Yeah. It, like, roars at you. Okay, so then she's just going to jump on its back and try and, like, wrestle it down to the ground. Okay, roll a strength check. Oh, that's an eight. Uh, it rolled a one. <laughs> so uh, you can you jump on it and it like tries to like throw you off and it roars. And then like you get it in kind of like a sleeper hold, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it kind of like like its knees give out and uh, like it's it's technically prone, but um, it's still like like it could jump up at any second, basically. Um, and. It is going to be Bijou next. All right. I'm going to move myself. I know it's not a large room, but as far away from the lion as possible. Yeah. And I am going to cast Phantasmal Force on it. Um, And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it see in its mind the illusion of a much bigger much like bulkier, um, much more ferocious lion that is going to be just roaring in its face while it's in this grapple. Okay. And so it has to make a intelligence saving throw. It has to beat 16. Does it get disadvantaged because it's an animal? No. No. Shit. It does not beat it. Okay. 
So um, it's going to take 1d6 psychic damage. Um, so it's going to be 5 psychic damage. Okay. Um, and so it, it imagines this lion that's way bigger than it um, just like slashing and clawing at its face. And it feels that as if it actually happened. Okay. But my friends here don't see anything. Okay. Okay. Um, Reeve is up next. Um, are we in a closed space? Is yes. It like in, indoors? Yes. Are there any windows or anything like that? No. No. Dang it. Um, I wonder, um, since I'm trying to, I'm going to try to do my fine steed again, <laughs> but I can cast, I mean, it, it doesn't say anything about having to be, it just kind of forms. It just kind of appears. Mm-hmm. Um, would I be allowed to do that? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, whistle and like Alexi just kind of appears. Yeah. And I'm going to hop on his back and, um, why though? I don't know. Just to be (laughs) faster. And then, um, uh, well, the uh, two attacks doesn't count for, uh, I can't do two spells. Can I, is that count Mm -hmm. as an attack? No. Okay. So you have an action. You can either cast a spell as an action, or you can attack as an action. Okay, gotcha. But uh, you, you, I have two attacks now, but that is not like a, no. It's uh, still okay. the attack action. Okay, gotcha. So. Okay. Um, uh, can I? Can I'm sorry. I'm reading. I'm trying to see what my what attack my steed may have. I don't think it does have an attack. I think it's just a riding thing. I'm just. It just increases my movement speed. Basically, that's all it is. Okay. You're in a pretty small room. Okay. Okay. Um, but you are now riding a capybara. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Congratulations. I thought it was kind of a bigger arena, so I should have asked that. Um, Tatsua, roll. Whoop, roll a strength check. Fifteen. Okay. Um, the lion like tries to shake you off, uh, but you're able to hold on uh, by like grasping onto the hair of its mane. Um, and it's going to actually like jump up and uh, pounce at uh, Harry because it's deeming you as the biggest threat because you're the biggest boy. Mm-hmm. And um, it's going to like reach out with its claws and attack you for seven damage. And you have to make a DC 13 strength saving throw. 18, 19, 20. Okay, cool. So you are still able to stand up and not get knocked prone. What was the damage? Six? Eight, seven. Seven? And it is Harry's turn. Okay. Um, let me verify. I'm pretty sure this is an extra. Oh, nope. It is my action. Okay. Um, how close is he to me? Is he like right on top of me? Yep. Okay. Um... How how big is this room? Like twenty feet kind of thing? Twenty foot square ish. Actually like very 30 foot small. square. Yeah. Thirty foot square. Okay. Um I am going to do conjure animals. Concentration up to one hour, sixty feet. I'm gonna conjure a giant constrictor snake. Thing is, I don't think I can have it do anything until we roll for initiative for him. Okay. Or her or it. Oh, God. It's worse than me. That means it goes <laughs> right after you. Oh, good point. Good point. It's a three. I don't know if I get to add dexterity to it. Yeah, so it matches me. So it's a four. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to try and talk to him. Um, talk to the lion? Yeah. With okay. Speech of Beast. So I may not understand him, but he can understand me. Mm-hmm. Um, whoa, hey, buddy, buddy, hey, hey, I could feed you if you're hungry. You don't have to attack us. I could treat you better than any of these people. I'm sure they chain you up all the time. Treat you like garbage. I'll pet you every day, all day. Roll a persuasion check. Oh, man. (laughs) Or I guess it would be what, animal handling? Maybe. Mm. Animal handling. Okay, cool. So that would be... 11 plus 5 plus 3, because I'm proficient. 
So 19? 19. 19. Okay. Is that baby Perrin? He decides to not attack you anymore. A waste of a snake. No, actually, I'm okay with that. But he's going to attack the other people still. Why? Because I didn't specify. Um, and it's the snake's turn. Um, being a small room, how big are you? How big would you say that my giant constrictor snake is? I don't know. Giant. That wasn't something that I had prepared. So does it say like <laughs> large, medium, uh, huge beast? We are very cramped in this room now. Yeah, <laughs> we are very cramped. Think okay. of um, Good. think of Jafar. Okay, um, <laughs> perfect. I am going to have the constrictor snake. I'm going to say protect my friends, and just kind of gesture. So it realigns its body, so mm-hmm. it's extremely difficult for the lion to reach them. And okay. we're all kind of in the same little area. Yeah. Except I'm on the lion. I'm sure. Do you want me to do a roll for the constrictor snake to do some quick? No, so it's well, going to. Well, did the lion leave you to attack me? No, because I, I was on it. I hung on by its hair. Okay, then she's yeah. on it. Um, it's going to. Uh, kind of like use its body to make like a ring around the lion um, so that it won't be able to like, so that it will have to like go through the snake basically to get to the other people. Um, And it like kind of like breaks a chair as it's doing this with its body and and all this stuff. So uh, that's what the snake's doing. What's Tatsu going to do next? Um, I guess try and jump off the line at this point because she doesn't want to hurt it. Or maybe mm-hmm. she could try and choke it a little, make it pass out. What do you want to do? Hmm. Cut it in half. Okay, I'm going to jump away from it because I'm going to give Harry another chance to calm the lion down. Okay. So she jumps off. Mm-hmm. Do I have to do a check for anything? No. Are you jumping like behind, trying to get behind the snake? Yeah, to the safety of the like where the snake is, making its protection. Okay. Um, cool. Is that it? Yes. Bijou. Okay, I'm gonna have the illusion of the lion like jump over the snake, so it's like facing the 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 lion again. Okay. Um. And it's just basically, I don't want it to cause damage, but it's going to just do whatever lines do to like assert like I'm the alpha Mm -hmm. and like just roar in its face. Yeah, I saw the Lion King. Yeah. (laughs) They like go and like almost hug. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's not going to like touch it because it's just an illusion. Yeah. yeah. It's just going to like try to. Sure. Um, To try and continue like scaring it basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it take any like damage or anything change? From I that? could choose, but I'm I'm trying not to damage it if Harry's gonna try to do something. So okay. I'm holding off on damage. Okay. Um Reeves turn. Um I really think this thing needs to take damage. I wanna I'm gonna punch it. You're gonna like ride in on your copy bar? Yeah, I'm gonna I wanna come in and just give it a low hook. Okay. On my coffee bear. Uh, roll for it. Okay. Um, it would be like a melee attack, so a strength. Strength. Uh, what was the um, What was the armor right now? Since I don't 11. have my mail, it'd be it'd be eleven for me. Oh no, it would be. Um, Mine's thirteen. Yeah, fourteen. I was nice. say his has got to be better. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right, and so it's my strength. Mm-hmm. I got nine. Okay. Well, um. With Plus my, what? That's it. That's it. Oh, okay. That's my strength. Plus, plus my strength. Okay. Um, it does not hit. You miss. Swing and a miss. Okay. Um, I got another attack. I can kind of swing around and hit it again. Yeah, if you want. Okay, I'm going to try it again. Oh, man. Uh, 11? Uh, it does not hit. Okay. Um, it's the lion's turn. Uh, the lion is, like, pretty scared by this um, spectral lion. But it gets to it sees Reeve kind of like running around in a circle on this copy bar and trying to hit it. Um, so it's gonna swipe out and try and um, hit you with its claw. 
and it hits you for uh, nine slashing damage. Okay. Harry's turn. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Rawr, rawr. <laughs> rawr. I basically said... <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sorry. don't attack them they'll give you plenty of pets too we will all pet you we will have a circle of petting roll that animal handling <laughs> also when I do this this snake kind of like reveals me so I don't have to step anywhere I just like he just kind of moves he knows okay. I want to make eye contact with this guy Um, 18 Okay. All right. Um, the lion is like kind of like he like cat like he is looking at you and kind of like cocks his head a little bit and like his eyes like he's he looks like he's like listening to you but his eyes are like kind of wide like he's like kind of scared uh, still because he's like surrounded by a snake and he's got a little dude on a capybara trying to swing punches at him so he's like. Kind of like gone from like, like ears down to ears up kind of thing, like a little the opposite. He's gone from like oh, hungry like, attacking to like kind of like a little bit panicked look. Like he still looks like he's kind of volatile, but he's like more like defensive now than he is like like violent. All right, I'm gonna yell, um, guys, stop attacking, and then I'm gonna end my turn to tell the snake to bring me into the circle and try and separate everyone. But just me and the lion. Okay. It kind of like slithers around and it's just like just the two of you. Just the two of you. Tatsu, are you going to do anything? Uh, she was just going to try and help. Maybe pat it a little. Because I have animal handling too. You're going to jump over the snake and try and enter the ring? Yeah, but I have a question. Is it just straight the animal handling skill, or do I add anything to it? Like this already has your proficiency. That is that's that what added I thought. Thing. It's that's already what I thought. added for you. I just wanted to double, triple check. So uh, she's just gonna try and stroke the line and calm it. So you're okay. gonna have to climb over the snake that I have told to keep you out. Yes. Uh, roll a athletics check first. Um, fifteen. You want me to roll for the snake or something? Uh, yes. Oh, the nine. All right, you you make it over the snake. It doesn't keep you out. Okay, so I'm going to roll with the inspiration. Okay. For animal handling. Uh-huh. Good. Well, great. Nine. Plus your... Yeah, that's... Yeah, she rolled real low. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nine. Uh, Okay. You try and pet it, and he like kind of like dodges his body and like turns around and faces you. Okay. Uh, Bijou's turn. I'm gonna adjust the phantasm to um, go behind, like sort of to the right of and slightly behind uh, Harry, mm -hmm. and um, just sit calmly to kind of show that like it is loyal to Harry. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. Reeve. Um, I'm going to gallop away from the, uh, the lion. Um, but not in a way that seems like I'm like running away, you know, like not in a way where it, it would, well, the chase snake me. has kind of like it put itself you between you and the lion. Oh, it has. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to just hop off the capybara. I'm going to hop off Alexi. Okay. Um, okay. The lion is going to like, kind of like start like pacing back and forth he's got his eyes on tatsu like his eyes keep darting back and forth between like tatsuo and harry and then like the snake around like he seems to be like calming down but still very nervous about the snake being there um and it's harry's turn okay i'm gonna use speak with animals so i can actually understand him now i don't i don't know how smart he is mm -hmm. but um um I'm going to get rid of this giant creature if you promise me to remain calm. 
and not attack my friends. And he can he can talk back. Mm-hmm. He's like, it's big snake, big snake, big snake. Okay, big snake, scary people, big snake. <laughs> All right. Um, nice man, nice man, big snake, scary people. <laughs> nice man, pets, pets, nice man, pets, nice man gets rid pets. of snake. Uh, okay. The snake disappears. Is that what yeah, you said? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, he kind of like he's continuing to pace back and forth, but he's like, oh, nice man, nice man, no snake, nice man, uh, scary girl, scary girl. What? Nice man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's like, little, little person, little person. <laughs> hey I'm scared. I all you hear is raw 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 big lion big lion I'm, I'm i don't understand what his concerns are but i as the lion is sort of just laying yeah next to here i want to be looking at the the real lion yeah and just doing that slow like calm blinky thing that cats <laughs> yeah. do to kind of be like everything's cool yeah like Big lion was scary. He <laughs> seems was. nice. Seems nice. <laughs> I'm gonna start um, itching him a little bit behind the ear, just trying to find that sweet spot. Yeah. Um, and just saying it's all good. All friends. All friends now. All friends. Um, roll uh, another animal handling. Um, Fifteen. All right. Uh, you find the spot, and he kind of like he starts he starts purring a little bit, and like rubs his his like he puts his he leans into the pet, you know, um, <laughs> and he kind of like sits his little his his butt down, and he's not pacing anymore. And I think we're like out of initiative. Nice, big man, ride lion. <laughs> <laughs> no. It roars. <laughs> Uh, And that's where we're going to end this episode. So we'll pick it up next week. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Shoulder. Cat. Radio. Ah! Dog. Dog.